The entire third act is looked pretty dark as it takes place during the night. Visually, the buildings look like the ones from the snow globes, but this is also a mixture of the visual symbolism from earlier. Visual symbolism is also in the rooftop scene's design. It's also a mixture of the two motifs. Like the buildings on the round planet, it's almost as though cylinders don't really belong there. The dispersed circles also give the visual idea that the girl finds a little prince amongst a bunch of circles. Earlier, Bright Green appeared with the little prince and when entering the aviator's backyard. We could say that Green is their visual cue. She opens the rooftop to meet the prince and is sort of bathed in the color green. Later, we basically meet the academy teacher, a vilified version of the man we see interviewing the girl earlier. Throughout the movie, we see a lot of inessential things being thrown away. They come into a large room where a bunch of things are being incinerated. A blue bicycle is the first thing that is crushed. Other things that get incinerated are other symbols of travel and movement, like boats, planes, and also a single tire. I think there are two metaphors of the life plan in the third act. One being this room, the other one being the machine. The lighting in these scenes is very similar to the first scenes when she is being interviewed. The hands from the machine are also shaped similarly to the handle seen earlier. A small but poignant detail is when the academy teacher flicks the on switch. We hear something like a car starting, thus initiating the life plan. It's also Mr. Prince that saves her from it. I thought I'd never find anyone who wanted to hear my story. Then you came along, just in time. The glass globes play important roles during the entire movie as they reflect an emotional repression. Both of the globes in the little girl's world and in the story are removed in different ways near the end of the movie. The moment she realizes she doesn't have to be the kind of person her mother is, she cracks the glass. The two return to the little prince's planet to find a rose, and then the second glass globe is lifted. There's a similar shot earlier in the stop motion portion. And my interpretation is that both are a visual metaphor for the passage of time. Earlier we talked about clocks and how the lack of timekeeping by the aviator ironically implies the aviator accepts time. All of the third act is very dark after the ambulance scene. Again with how important lighting and color is in the movie, the movie has the hardest moment emotionally and then a sudden change in lighting from cold dark tones to warm tones. This way is mentally relieving to the audience at the same time the movie reflects a tonal or emotional shift. It's the branches of the trees that turn red first, and the way they color in almost looks as though they're bleeding in, like veins do. This connects to the brief shots of blood we see earlier in the film, like when the little girl opens the jar for the first time. Like the bright greenery of the plants and flowers seen in the movie earlier, blood is also connected to the idea of life. Put in a meta way, a meta way? As the animation style itself is a commentary, Blood Red contrasts deeply with the girl's cold and sterile CG animated environment. Put simplistically, we could say the movie reinforces the message that once you really start investing in relationships, it also puts you at risk of getting hurt. You run the risk of weeping a little if you let yourself get too. The world the little girl lives in works like clockwork. She's called only by a number, another girl like a hundred thousand other girls. And of course, their neighborhood carries the same idea, with houses like a hundred thousand other houses. You might have a unique number or a unique name, but when the universe is so large that there are hundreds of thousands of people who are just like you, then what does that really mean? It is the time that you have devoted to her that makes your rose so important. 
With the little girl's environment of straight lines and muted colors, you get a sense of how restrained and controlled her life is. It's so controlled that it becomes bleak, and with so much holding back, there isn't a lot that separates this family's existence from every other house and family on the block. We do get warmer colors and less rigidity once the girl leaves her home environment and builds a friendship with the crazy old guy next door. There's a close connection between the idea of childhood and freedom, as there's an aspect of vulnerability in childhood. Now compare that with the control and restraint of adulthood in the film, as the adult world limits expression because it isn't deemed essential. As the little prince went around the galaxy visiting different adults on planets, most of them have one thing in common. They're all adults who think that they're in control, but really are just alone on their own little rocks floating in the empty vastness of outer space. But you don't know You have nothing to fear about your life or the future if you have it all planned out to every day of every week of every year. You could have your days, hours, and seconds counted, controlled, and planned out to every detail, but you sacrifice your freedom for your perceived control. On the other hand, when you let go of your perceived control over the future, that means having to face the uncertainty of life, and eventually, death. Well, everyone has to say goodbye, sooner or later. Sunsets were a big part of the original book, as sunsets seemed to universally communicate the idea of the constant passage of time, and the idea that nothing lasts forever. All that really remains in the end are your memories and your own artifacts of them. Eventually you stop being a child. Eventually people will leave your life and there is nothing you can do about it. But what the film presents and what she realizes is that the important thing is not that things don't last. It's as long as you can remember what those things were, they stay with you. And it's then that you can accept change. A part of accepting the future includes the acceptance of death. In a similar fashion, if you can remember the people who are close to you, their impact stays with you. Let's look at the shot in the end when they arrive at the hospital to visit the aviator. We've seen this shot earlier at the end of the Little Prince story. It's fitting that in a way, they end the little girl's story with the same shot. Both of them are letting go of the hands of their parental figures. In the context of the story, the little girl is confronting the aviator in the hospital, and the little prince is committing suicide. What's especially poignant is that the song in the OST that is playing in both endings is called Growing Up. You grow up once you can accept death. By the end, she understands adulthood doesn't mean restraint, and sometimes it doesn't even mean being in control. Sometimes it means letting go of control, because you're able to accept the end.